Hey everyone, this is Scott, your Hoosier Marshal. Back with another video from Northeast Indiana. <clears throat> A Freedom Friday video. Today, smoking the little Prince pipe with, you guessed it, Prince Albert inside. What a duo. I, uh, I already filmed <clears throat> basically the handling, the uh, in-depth portion of my Freedom Friday video. I'm hopeful that uh, the next Freedom Friday video, weather and time permitting, I can actually be on a range and uh, maybe get some footage of shooting. The weapon that I'm going to present to you folks, it's a, it's a nice day out today, but I can't make it to the range. But um, what I d discussed today was my Ruger P89. This gun is commonly referred to as a battle tank and it holds up to its reputation. What a big beefy handgun um, that they don't make anymore and I'm happy to own. So you can see the rest of it when you get to that portion of the video. I'm just enjoying the beautiful weather. Yesterday I uh, got a break in the weather when I got home from work and uh, it had been raining all day, but I actually got the yard mowed. The air was a little cool, a little brisk, but not too bad. Today would have been a better day, but I didn't know what today was gonna bring, so I had the time on my hands and I jumped on it. For today's Freedom Friday, I have my Ruger P89 sitting on the lid of my Blackstone. The P89 started life as the P85 in 1985. In 1989, there were some changes made and it became the P89. Production on this gun ran through 2013. It's a full-size handgun that was designed as a as a duty weapon, not a uh, concealed carry weapon. Obviously, you can see um, the overall length is uh, about seven inches, and it is a pretty wide gun. It's nothing that you can easily conceal. This gun runs flawlessly, never giving me any issues. It'll eat any any type ammo, any weight bullet that I put through it. Full metal jackets, copper plated, lead, hollow points. It doesn't matter, it just eats it. Um, as a 15 round magazine, it does have a three dot sight system, although the sights are kind of small. They do work though. They do, I prefer the three dot sight system. The gun has magazine release on both sides. It's an ambidextrous gun. Magazine release here. Magazine release here. It also has a decock safety mechanism that's on both sides of the gun. The gun, the magazine in the gun is empty. 15 round magazine. Decock system, it's in safety right now. Flip it up, 
you can cock the gun and if you decide to decock it you don't have to do this number you can cock it and you can safely hit the decock lever and the hammer will come down as with all guns with a decock system there's a bar that comes or some sort of system that comes down in here that you can see it moving in there that will block the hammer so when it falls it doesn't hit the firing pin. The Ruger P89 has aluminum alloy frame. It uses a uh, SIG P220 style locking system and a 1911 style hinged barrel. Very dependable gun, very actually very accurate gun. They just never really took off for what Ruger hoped to be some kind of service weapon, police or military service weapon. Uh, they just never took off for them. But like I said, you can see it's it's quite the beefy gun. Um, guns had thousands of rounds put through it. Nothing is ever broken. Everything has functioned flawlessly. Still a it's got some a uh, little bit of patina, a little bit of bluing wear on it, but still a perfect example of what Ruger was trying to produce in the uh, mid 1980s, trying to go after uh, government, police, and military contracts, which, like I said, never happened. So they were forced to sell it to the on the civilian side of things. And uh, this is probably when I talked about my. Smith & Wesson Model 59, that was part of the Wonder 9 group. So this, this gun is right in that same category. So there's my Freedom Friday submission for this week. Ruger P89 9mm. Next Wednesday, the 24th, is the opening day of turkey season here in Indiana. I'm probably going to take the day off work. See if I can bag a turkey. It's always nice when you go on the first day hunting for whatever is in season and you uh, bag what you're looking for that day. And uh, then you, I don't know, for me, as time goes on, I enjoy the time sitting in the woods or depending on what I'm hunting, walking through the woods. <clears throat> but as the end of the season comes near and you haven't bagged what you're looking for yet, you uh, start to get a little frustrated. I don't get as frustrated as I used to. It's not that important to me anymore. And I, I'm just out there for fresh air and to clear my head. But it's always nice on the opening day to get what you're after. So, What are some things that uh, you folks do besides work and make YouTube videos um, to pass the time that you're interested in, you find fun, you, you use, you have as a hobby? Maybe you can do a, a VR and talk about it. I... Uh, I find it interesting. I have basically a core group of presenters that I that I follow on YouTube and in the YTPC. I I have like going on 300 sub, our channels that I subscribe to now, but um, and I subscribe to them all for a reason because what they're doing or talking about piqued my interest. But it's really hard to actually watch every video that every one of those presenters put out. I, I try to stay caught up. But like I said, there's a core group that I religiously watch <clears throat> your videos. <clears throat> I like to uh, see what's going on in your lives, what you've been up to. And uh, so maybe do a VR. 
What hobbies do you have? How do you pass the time? Do you like to hunt? Do you like to fish? Do you do you play guitar? <clears throat> if you do, I commend you because uh, I wish I would have tried to learn to play the guitar when I was younger because I think it would have been a lot easier. Uh, as a 50-some-year-old man trying to learn to play the guitar, I find it's very difficult, especially when you have fingers like this. When you, My wife always tells me I, I have gorilla hands. Uh, and playing the guitar requires a lot of finger dexterity, and, and uh, I struggle with that. Um, I actually haven't picked up my guitar in a couple months now. So I do other things besides go hunting. I used to be big into fishing. I kind of got out of it. Uh, I've been thinking about getting back into it here lately. There was a time <clears throat> back in the, uh, through the 1990s, I was huge into bass fishing, bass fishing tournaments. Um, did fairly well at it, made some money at it. But uh, man, when you get into that bass fishing tournament circuit, it, you, you've just taken, I, and I learned this the hard way, you've just taken something that you started out doing because you loved it and it was fun um, and you turn it into almost a part-time job it was it was uh, both days on the weekend there, there was a tournament going on they had to be at several tournaments through the week we had I had a fishing partner we actually had a couple sponsors that helped fund things um, and like I said, on top of that, we, we did win some tournaments and make some money, but I, I finally gave it up, uh, deciding that uh, it was taking me away from my family too much and I didn't want to do that. So, until my next video, this is Scott, your Hoosier Marshal from Northeast Indiana, saying make sure you always take the time to tell those you love what they truly mean to you because you never know when it just might be too late. Thanks for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you.